Good morning. Welcome to our live talk program. This is Lord Graham here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering wisdom for living on this year, Friday morning. Rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, we're looking at a topic. How serious are you, are you about an instruction and leadership? So how serious are you about an instruction and leadership? So this is our topic for this morning here. Um, as we do our live talk program, welcome top of the morning to you. Hopefully you had a blessed night rest and you're ready to take on the challenges and take some opportunities this day. Let us pray. Our Father, I thank you again for the blessings of your word. I thank you, dear Lord, for your continued guidance. Pray that you may be with um, me as I go over these um, passages of scripture. May you bless those who are listening. May our minds, dear Lord, be tuned to your word that we might live. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So here am I looking at how serious are you about um, an instruction and leadership, a, a singular instruction. How serious are you? No, serious are you with leadership? Because often leadership is simply giving instructions or setting a path and be very serious about it. And what I have learned about truth or about information is to what degree the degree that I perceive the information to be serious is to the degree that um, I take it to heart and it has value to me. I could have information, a piece of information or knowledge, wisdom from the Bible that I see it as truth, but I don't take it too seriously. I take it lightly. I don't understand the emphasis and what's the big deal. But when it gets into me in a very serious way, in a very profound way, and I take it to heart, and I follow through seriously, I follow hard after it, I find that it changes everything, it changes my interaction with that passage of scripture, that truth, it, it, it is profound, you sometimes have an experience in life, and when you have that experience, the a text come back to your mind, and you see that text in a vivid, bright, clear way, because something happened that was so profound, that makes the word of God, that particular word of God or that particular scripture or truth or saying become profound. And that's because something riveted it, riveted it in your mind and made it there like it stand out very clear. And that's what um, I want to look at this morning here is like when you're communicating and you're giving instruction or you're in leadership, how uh, serious are you? about an instruction that you're giving, especially if you know the instruction is very critical. I want you to go over here and I want you to bring this note to this person. And at, at that point, you give the person to the person, like, oh, it's a note. I probably can't stop and stop five places. But if you say, no, this is critical. This is life and death. You send a message to the person that looks, listen, whatever happened, if you have to slay dragons along your way, if you have to attack an alliance along the way, you need to deliver this message. Then this person like, oh, wow, this must be some very important message. And the person act that way. But if I'm given instruction and the instruction is not given in that way, then I'm not added the seriousness to the instruction. Now, our focus for this morning here is Proverbs chapter 29. Still in Proverbs 29, I'm still hovering there. I'm going to take four verses from Proverbs 20, 29. Proverbs 29, verse 15 through, well, I'm reading 15, 17, 19, 21. So jump in one verse straight through. 15, 17, 19, 21. And this year, I think, um, illustrates the body of what I'm talking about here, the concept. Notice here in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. 19. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. Verse 19. Our servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Verse 21. He that delight, del he that del delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him, have him become his son 
at the land. Right? So four verses here. So these four verses communicate in one concept in my mind at least, to my mind. All right? And it has to do with instruction and leadership. Um, what is the end result you're looking for? And based upon the end result, you train for that end result. You train up a child for the end result of what you're looking for. So if you're looking for the end result and you want what you want in the end result is a child that's going to make you come down with gray years, gray, gray hairs, sorry, real quick, uh, early on and rapid your aging process and your mental state and your sleep state, um, you train a child for that. You make sure that every time you give a child an instruction and in your leadership of that child, that you make sure always communicate ambivalence, always communicate you're not serious, always communicate that you're a joke and that you should not be taken serious and a child could laugh at you and see you as a fool. And you, you can communicate that to a child and that child will, I, I, I will guarantee here that this that child will make you have a miserable experience and will make sure that you're a joke and that's basically what to me is being communicated here and it's the same thing in leadership if you're managing one person a team of people you want somebody to give you a headache you make sure manage for headache and you'll find that you will be taken for a joke and that's what it is and no matter how much say, but, uh, about love there's no there's such thing when leadership is called for, leadership is called for. Love is part of the whole experience. You know, you're working for me. I'm going to treat you with love. But my instructions needed to be followed out. So notice here is that how to and not to train up a rebel. This is what these four verses in my mind communicate. How to and not to train up a rebel. How to and not to. Train up somebody that's insolent. So if you want somebody that's not insolent and rude and disrespectful, then these four texts will explain to you how to not get that bad outcome. If you want somebody to be respectful, then this also tells you how to get respect and how to have a respectable worker or a respectable child. Also, how not to or how to. How to how not to have a t person that is entitled, child that is entitled. Uh, these are the kids that go around later in life and go kill their parents and take the inheritance. Or how not to have a child that is um, entitled. If you want a child that is arrogant, these four verses will tell you how to get an arrogant, little rude, little full of themselves person. Also, if you want your workers to work and you don't want them to think that they they come to work to do you a favor then this four texts will give you that i'll read them again for you soon also this four texts will tell you how to achieve positive outcome striking the balance between love and fear see in this world that's just what it is love and fear um from the moment adam and eve was created in a perfect world God gave them the threat. The wages of disobedience to me is death. In a perfect world, you know, there's people who believe that they can be more righteous in their upbringing of their children. They can be more righteous than God. They can be better than God. And they go prove God, them and Oprah Winfrey, as I say, they go and prove God that God is wrong. Never worked. Never saw it work. Somehow, probably somebody out there saw it work. Never see it work. You want to try this insolent, disrespectful, arrogant. You disobey these things and you'll find that that result. And somebody say, oh, but the child is so cute. Yeah, they'll be cute, all right. They'll be cute on the side of the street, on drugs and just living a wretched life. Insolent. And this is part of the problem that's in our society. Our society is growing up a bunch of people who cannot take it, cannot be instructed, cannot be spoken to. Can it be reasoned with? Can it be advised? Because they don't never train from a child instructions. They don't never tra uh, train to take any type of instructions. They can't be instructed. Nobody can't talk to them. And that's really what's going on. You see all these kids, and they're there, they, they're shooting up a place, doing mass murders, or they're doing gang banging, or they're being little whores. You, know, you can't talk to them. 
Nobody can talk to them. They can't be instructed. Because from day one, their parents train them. Oh, you little prince. Oh, you little princess. Oh, no, no harsh instruction. Only, only nice instruction for my little prince. <laughs> or, or nice instructions for my little princesses. <laughs> that can be a little witch. Give it time. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> but it doesn't work. Never work. No matter who the person is. They could be poor in the ghetto. Or they could be in a palatial um, living. It will ruin the child. So let's break down these four verses here. Uh, there's not much to break down. It's very cut and dry. And I see parents. Oh, I'm going to spoil my little boy because ah, I'm so excited over him. I like wreck. It's going to be a lazy bum in the, in the in living proverbially in the basement of their mom. A lot of times the, the mothers somehow do this. Fathers do this also. Because fathers do this a lot by neglect. Or they to start wiping lollipop in a child's mouth. And a child like like a dog licking the lollipop. I'd be like, man, stop it. Notice here in Proverbs 29, verse 15. The rod and reproof give gives wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Now, now I've often thought about this. This is what I've thought about over the years. I've thought about this because this is in other parts of Proverbs. And as you know... Um, the ruin of Israel was at the feet of David and Solomon. They wrecked the country with their crazy lifestyle, even though they were so highly regarded by God. And the people, now, so notice here, the, the rod and reproof give wisdom. Now, I've thought about that for years, and I don't know if you've thought about that. Have you ever thought about that? Um, why is that? Or are you one of these people that reject this and say this is error? This is the Bible speaking in a different time period. And now we live in a time period where all these young people, they're druggies and, and lazy as ever. So, so, so how are we better? So I've thought about this. Have you thought about this? Why is it that when in training a child or in leadership, the rod and, and reproof, um, which is a, like a stern warning or a stern re rebuke, why why is this necessary you know and if you don't believe it's necessary the rest of the program not going to work for you um but why i've thought about it why all right why is this necessary especially when you with a child or a new co-worker you know new worker why that sternness all right so so the what i've realized over in, over the years is like the you know the, the the law has to be laid down, so to speak. That, that's that's number one. The law has to be laid down. But firstly, when deal with a child, so let's because a child is is put forward here, right? Uh, the idea of a child is left to themselves to play video games and watch movies and to have Cartoon Network grow them up. Why does that not work? And you probably have some some idea. I'm sure you have ideas if you've thought about it and so meditated upon it. But when you observe a child, just me here just observing children, and I'm watching the way when their parents instruct them. Uh, many times, say the child is doing something and they're in full flight of happiness. Um, have you ever observed this? They're in full flight of happiness. They're just, wee, you know, just happy. And you say, Johnny, hey, um... Stop what you're doing. You, you're going to hurt yourself or hurt somebody. And Johnny's like, whoa, this is great. I'm having a good time. I'm just running around here in circle. And I'm assumed to lose my balance. Uh, the, 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 what, the child, what you're saying to the child. Um, why I think it's difficult is often because in a childlike situation that the, the child is right is in in the thought of right here right now uh, the, the child doesn't see two steps ahead because the ex the experience is not there and the words you're saying at a moment is like you're saying wah 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 uh, it doesn't mean much because what means much right now is that i'm going full 80 miles per hour around the room and I'm about to lose balance. I'm about to slam myself, cut my face and have a cut for the rest of my life. A scar in the face of my face for the rest of my life. But all of that, the child can't rationalize. And even if, the, if you said to the child, you might cut yourself and have a cut for the rest of 
your life. Just think about what you just said. Even if you understand every word you just said, you will. You could have a cut in your face for the rest of your life. You have a scar that's going to be there. The child could be like, how is the child going to understand that and the ramifications of that? Cut in face, affect you for the rest of your life. A child can't process that. They can't understand um, what that means. You know, what are you talking about? A cut in my face. What was, okay, okay so I cut in my face. I do two cuts in my face. What, what, what happened? It probably made me cuter. See, the, the, and if you ever observed now, for me now over the years, I've observed parents talking to children. As they're communicating to the child, I'm realizing, wait a minute, most of that vocabulary being used and the concepts being communicated, the child can't understand. Like, what are you talking about? Because I'm, as an adult, I'm like, hmm, I don't think the child can understand those words. They could tell you, what did mommy just say? Mommy just say, be careful because you might hurt yourself. What does that mean for the child? Psh, hurt? Man, I've seen children jump off of the stairs and land on their knees and just get up and keep going. If I jump off of a stair and land on my knee, I'm heading to the hospital. So the those concepts does not really work. So all that verbal instruction for the most part does not work and until that child is trained to take certain vocal inflections and certain things seriously like they can hear in that voice even though mom is say mommy or daddy say hey look stop you might hurt yourself what they heard is stop you might hurt yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if I did that good. It probably come over bad. I'll listen to it later on. You know, they need to hear that for... And that's why I think sometimes when... Like if a dad starts sounding a certain way, the child will freeze up. Because what they hear coming is dad sounding that way. Next thing you know, there's going to be sparks flying. Because the seriousness is not being communicated. And, and, and one thing I've observed even like sometimes when say mom give the same instruction... Stop! So, you know, they give it in a way that it sounds to the child. It doesn't just be miserable. And the child learned that communication and learned to dismiss it because it, sound, it doesn't sound serious. Like it doesn't sound um, um, like arresting. Stop! Because the child doesn't understand full ramification. And that's one of the reasons I've thought about it over the years. Why is it difficult? Just by observing over and over again, I've sat and observed this. Um, for all these e multiple decades. And I say, I think I see why. Because in the child mind, the child is running full speed ahead. Ah, I'm having fun, yeah. And you say, Johnny, hey, Johnny, stop. You You might hurt yourself. What does that mean to the child? Nothing. It, 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 it doesn't mean... Because long, long term, like if you say, be careful, Johnny, with that knee. You're jumping on that knee. That knee's not made to be jumped on. Johnny be like, I do this all the time. What are you talking about? Because knee replacement, water knee, you know, damage to the knee. What does that mean to a child? How does a child process that? You know, yo, Johnny, stop doing that to your knee because when you get old, you might have to get knee replacement surgery. Just think about that. Are you saying that to a three-year-old, five-year-old, eight-year-old, a 12-year-old? might start being able to get it at uh, 12 just, to, just, just uh, that to me is where the problem is you're you're communicating and the person can't, the word doesn't have the same weight so the problem is now modern society say well the way to add that weight they that the bible suggests they throw it out they say ah no um you, you know you're gonna abuse the child but the problem is something has to wait had the meaning to the child because there's something that had, had that meaning and it's not so much sometimes the words is your words your vocal inflection and they need to know look i'm gonna tell you to stop i'm telling you to stop that but the next time i say verbal you understand why coming out the third is lightning from heaven you you you're gonna go feel and then the next time i talk and my, my voice my voice sound a certain way you know what's coming next. So you understand. That means you put that brakes on that spin in that room. And later on in life, the child will like, oh, I get now. When they're seeing somebody doing a plastic surgery. 
Why? Oh, because I, I slashed my face when I was a child. But they can't get that. But you say, go to the average even eight-year-old and say plastic surgery. They might know what it is, but they don't understand the cause because they don't understand cause. They don't understand mommy and daddy goes out to work and that's what bring in the money, but they don't understand the level of effort to cover one of those surgeries. So they can just take themselves and slam into a wall and ah, that was funny, I'm bleeding from the mouth. And then you'd be like, man, I'm going to pay a surgeon to fix that. You know how much money that's going to cost? So that to me is, so just in case you get it, a child cannot understand certain future ramifications because certain costs, certain social stigma, certain things, they don't get it. They can't get it. They're not supposed to get it. So then you have to be able to communicate to that child. How are you going to communicate to that child? Now we flip that now because remember we're talking about, I want to talk about here also leadership. So you have a business, you're running the business and there are certain customers, there are certain um, accounts, there are certain things that you have to be very careful. You probably have a customer that is, you know, these little things set the customer off. And so you have a, you have a, you have a mark behind that, beside that customer name. The new person comes along and the new person dealing with the customer. You tell the new person, be careful. This customer you have to be very careful with. And the, 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 the new, no, sorry, not the new customer, the new worker comes in and they deal with the customer, they deal with them very loose. There's going to be some repercussions. So why? So I said, why would you do it? The person just knew they don't understand everything. For, because you probably tell them and they don't get it. So the next action is going to be, look, I'm going to tell you next time. You do that again, I'm suspending you. What? Yeah, you're getting supposed to fire you. And the person be like, whoa, 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 whoa. As I tell you, this customer here, you cannot play with this, this account. And so forth. And sometimes that's why you see bosses will act a certain way to the new guy. And somebody said, why they act that way to the new guy? Because the order has to be laid down. Because if it's not laid down in the beginning, it's going to be harder later on to establish that um, command and control. Um, you think about it, why is the, 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 the military, the various different branches of the military, are able to deal with some of the worst of the worst in our society? Our kids that the mommy and daddy had spoiled them. Because they'll break you into it. Simply that. They'll just break you. They use the force and aggression and um, embarrassment and everything possibly to get you in line. Because you're not going to get in line. Ain't nobody going to go over there running towards bullets. It has to be something trained into you. And so this is the reality. Now, this is not a discussion to be pro or against breaking people. But the whole idea here is the... The, when you're dealing with children, is that they want to be in charge. And the problem, they don't have the sensibility to be in charge. See, the issue is not the issue of breaking. The issue is the issue that you cannot have somebody that doesn't understand the ramification of their choices be in charge of themselves. Now, in our society, the, the kind of trend right now is that you want the child to express themselves and to be free to have their own mindset and all that. That's good and well uh, when as their their knowledge and self-control is developing. But a child is a child that needs to be led as a child because that child don't understand um, to make certain decisions. But as the decision making of the child become more reasonable, then you can say, let's turn, you know, cut the, the cords that bind the child to yourself as much. Now I'm going to read again verse 15. The rod and the reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Because why the child is left to raise themselves? You know, when you see people start off telling you about that they were like, they were latchkey latch kids. And you know, that means, you know, the parents probably gave them a, a key and they were able to let themselves in. Nobody was really supervising them. And that their kids were brought up that way. And then you deal with them, you realize they're rotten. You can't instruct them. They have no self-control, no behavior, no manners. 
They don't know how to respect authority. And you say, what, what's that about? Because you realize that they're left up to themselves. They ain't no, no parent, nobody. Um, as I said here before, you look at the statistics, look at the success rate of kids coming out of the welfare system. Look at the success rate of the kids that's coming out. Um, when I say the welfare system, I mean the, the social service system, the system where they grab the kids and have them as the ward of the state. Because it's it's nobody really cares for you. It's just some workers who go on a shift basis. They work an eight-hour shift or whatever hours. And there's nobody that's really going to be like, I want the best for you. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the best for you. The system is like, no. No, 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 no rough treatment. No discipline, no whatever. You know, think about how many kids will call diapers. Not necessarily because they're being abused. Not those. But call because the parents want to discipline them. And then the government come and say, oh, no, you can't do that because that would abuse the kids. And then the kids grow up to be a mess. You don't see success rates from those type of kids because they're a mess. And even people who defend this type of stuff, they defend it often because they're a mess. So the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bring it his mother to shame. And you never get rest. Because what it is, is that now, say you're somewhere, child's going to always act up. You can't talk to children. Terrible disposition. You see these kids left up to their own. Terrible disposition. Misery. Sul miserable. Sulky. Um, always, you know, the, the children that are often, no, 100%, the children that are not disciplined, are the most miserable wretches in this earth. Miserable. Parents like give them every lollipop, candy, do whatever, always trying to buy them out. Like, okay, negotiate. I'm telling you, I believe in the American policy. You do not negotiate with terrorists. You do not do, <gasps> you know, somebody, <gasps> did he call kids terrorists? I'm telling you, they'll terrorize you. Next text going to talk about that. You, there's, you watch a parent that every time the, the child go, bah, you know, or, or bah, whatever the child does, boom, here's a lollipop. Oh, I'll negotiate with you. You get to watch this later on. And it's a constant negotiation. Watch the child. Forget about the parents. The parents is miserable. But watch the child. The child is sulky, miserable, don't want to talk to anybody. You walk up to a child. You say hi to the parent. You look at a child. A child looking at the floor. A little miserable. And there's a little whining. And they're spinning their shoulder and whatever. That's a child that is too much negotiation going on. The child has officially be part of the... They, what, they, what they have in UN, they, they have the, 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 the Permanent Security Council. And then you have people with... Um, they have the nuclear veto. And this is, I think, France, England, China, Russia, and America. Something like that. And that's a child in the house. So the, the mom has a veto. Um, the dad has the veto. And one or two or three of the kids. Imagine if it's five of them. They're like the, <laughs> the security council. They're like the permanent heads of the UN. And you can't get them ch children to do a thing. And they're miserable. The power that they wield don't make them happy. It make them miserable. Because they have force and control over themselves. And you cannot put the law down because there's no law. And it's the same thing with leadership. You go to a company, you bring me any company that the management doesn't have control. Good or bad, but the management doesn't have control. The union have control. The workers have control. Anarchy and chaos. It's a garbage company. It's a mess. I've never heard, probably there's one out there. You think, you know, this is one of the reasons why I, I believe the, the, the big three will never prosper as companies because the head of the companies have no control. Uh, they, they're running the company with the workers via the union. What type of business is that? So you can, how you produce a certain product um, because there's too many inputs. Um, when you have company, they call it even, even the companies that are run by what you call a, a a committee, they produce committee cars, uh, you know, but you often find a company that has a management and the management decide this is what happened and the CEO decide this is the direction of the company. And even when people griping, belly aching, 
this is what management says this is how it's going to run you find the products that come out of those companies they just do better it is it's just a better because it's it's kind of one person direction and that's just the reality and so you're in a house and the father is a boss the mother is the boss the children are bosses everybody miserable now notice in verse 17 it double downs on this idea here proverbs 29 verse 17 Proverbs 29 verse 17 says, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light to, unto thy soul. So, uh, here we are. We are wrapping up this earth history. We don't know how far we are from the end of it. And I've never met, in my how many years, a person, a family, who have broken this principle. And I'm not, you know, never met. And I stand here as someone who was not heavily disciplined. So, because I'm not, and just, I always have to give this caveat when I, um, if you read Ellen Joy's instructions, she's always very clear. She says that the whole process of raising a child is you almost never discipline the child. It is the, it is like the nuclear, um, I forget what it's called. It's like the, the nuclear, whatever they call it, option. He never disciplined a child, but she says every so often or once in a while or one time at least that you have to make sure the child know who is boss. Uh, you could read her writing. She said something along that line, but not boss wasn't the words you use. She says you have to bring the child into stir into a very stern reality as who is in charge because if a child will press you, press you, press you because they want to see how far they can go. And You'd want the best for the child. It's obvious. But a child, and I've dealt with adults who are just like that. They never learn this from a child. They just keep pressing and pressing and pressing. And even when you say, okay, okay, I'll go this further, no further. They keep pressing and pressing. Because that's how they were trained from children. And she had a situation, I remember I was reading one time where a child th throw themselves down and doing a temper tantrum. And she said, she grabbed the boy, pull him up and whacked him. And he stopped. Because what she says is that that order has to be established. There's a certain point you can go and no further. And somebody said, but that's that's not like Christ. Think about it. That's God right there. There's a limit, the Bible says, that nations, individuals, families will not, God will not allow them to go beyond a certain point. Even though God gives us freedom and people, oh yeah, God gave us freedom. Yeah, but think about it. There's bounds that are set within that freedom. There, every cup, every sorry, every nation has a cup, and when that cup reaches a certain point, it's like Lord step in and start to swat people like flies. That's just simply what it is. And so a man can't be more righteous than God. But as I say, as a whole generation of people who watch Oprah Winfrey and listen to Piaget and Sigmund Freud with their drug selves and all this type of stuff, and take all this mild psychology, and they believe it as if a child in your house walk over to a flower pot, pot and slam it to the ground. There's people who teach parents that what a child needs is a hug because their love cup needs to be full. What well, the Bible teaches is that that child is going to get the whipping. And that's what the Bible teaches. And if a child doesn't get that whipping, you have a monster on your hand. That's simple what it is. You have a child that will never give you rest because that child don't think they can get away. You have a child, I don't, loads, a few things I don't believe. That type of thing, child start breaking up stuff in the house, or a spouse start breaking up stuff in the house, I don't believe in it. I believe you make that happen, you're wasting your time. You get a divorce, your marriage is done. You have a child does that, your, ch your parenting is done. A child will never give you rest. They'll never give the society rest. A child that throw themselves on the ground and cause temper tantrum, you make sure another child that says that you can go so far, but at that level you stop. Whack! You don't get wax until you get up on your feet and you figure out how to stand up straight. That's my set of orders. Right? Ain't no child getting away with that. A child do it one time, they'll never do it again. They will think about it and they think about it and they think about what's gonna be more painful. Me walling on the ground or me getting whacked up until I stand up. And the other thing is, I don't believe a child, especially a boy, should be allowed by their father or their mother or their uncle or their aunt 
to push their mom and to slap their mom. Slapped, you're getting 10 slaps for that. And you learn, you never do it again. You never hit your mom. And that's it. And I see parents like, oh, he's a little boy. He's just getting angry and he going to whack his mom. I'm like, yeah, seeing him do that at 14 and see if that's so funny. You'd never make a child do that. Whacking their mom. But the mom off, they'll make it do that because they're busy on social media or something like that. A child, oh, I want to do something. So the child comes, mommy, I want to do something. I want to do this activity. And the mother said, no, not right now. Whack! And the child whacked the mom because the child is so angry. Why? Why do you have to discipline that? Because I tell you, that's when that child gets no, they don't know how to, they can't bottle and get a no and bottle it up. They lash out. So you can see that boy when he grow up and his wife said to him, no, whack! He's going to slap that woman down. So you do up, and it's like, I see, 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 you, 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 I see this coming, I'm going to deal with it right now. Somebody say, well, why would, why would you be so serious about it? You're a joker. If, if you look at this, right, I'm going to tell you, you see a boy doing that, that boy going to beat his wife later on in life. Somebody say, how can you make that projection? Because I'm an adult. You see, a child can't see that behavior and see how abhorrent it is. A, a person that has no wisdom can't see that. But this is why adults raise kids. God didn't put kids in the life of kids to raise kids. This is why when you have these, you know, you have people who have, they're 16 and they're having a child. Forget about it. This is going to be a major problem. They don't know how to manage themselves much as to manage a child. It is not so much what the child is doing at this point that is scary. It's projecting the thought and seeing the child doing it later on. And... Uh, just, just in case you listen to me, you don't know, you know what my age is. I just say to me my age. I'm 44, and I've never, ever seen this principle broken. I've never seen. I've seen parents who think, "Oh no, that's just oh, this is just too much," and you know, because the child is three or four. Okay, and I see this. But I've never seen, I've, I've grown to live to see kids who do these things to their parents. And they always come out to be bad seed. Because it was never disciplined out of them when they were a child. I've never seen, in all my life living, never seen somebody broke these principles. You make your child slap your mother, you're going to get some slaps. Multiple slaps. Or what enough that's going to set him you're gonna, be, gonna see you're gonna see lightning and thunder because what happened the child comes on a bad seed and i've and here's the irony too a, a lot of what i've said was said i'm seeing it not just with secular kids i saw it with christian kids and the child come out to be terrible derelict because why because those behaviors were never dealt with and then the child come out and now they're adult um, another male, somebody's talked to them and say something to them they don't like it or they got no for an answer, oh, it's going to be a fight because they never learned to bottle it, to have that self-control, to get a no. Oh, man. And be mad and just sit there and be mad. They lash out and they train the child to lash out whenever they get a no for an answer. And then God look at that child and said, if I brought this child to heaven, this disobedient little wretch, if I brought him to heaven and I tell him, no, you want to lash out on me. I would I almost wonder if every single of the Pharisees, they probably were kids that when they were young, little brats, they were told no and they couldn't take it. I wonder oftentimes this is when you have these little kids from over all over the country that comes to Wall Street and they have no self-control and they tell no and these little brats, they can't take no for an answer, and so they're willing to plunge nation into financial ruin and plunge businesses and individuals into financial ruin because they can't take no for an answer. They're like Ahab. That was the sin of Ahab. It was not just he was just weak. It was that he couldn't take no for an answer. He got sulky and depressed. And then Jezebel came and said, hey, let's go kill um, Ornan because he don't want to give you his, his form. And his silly self went and go kill Ornan. Because these little sulky little brats can't take no for an answer. 
And a lot of that type of stuff was training to us in children. Our parents never made no effort to get that little sulkiness and bitterness. And you can't see kids not growing up. You tell them no. Oh, they go so depressed. They, they, they fall. They can't take it. Oh, I want to cry. Why? Because mommy or daddy told me no. i like, yeah, you but get up. I can stop that foolishness. You can get so much noise in your life, you be, you go, you go, your head's going to spin. But this is one of the worst conversations one could have. Because there's parents, oh, no, not my little honey. How many little honeys we have seen growing up and they're little brats that can't be told no for an answer and nobody ever disciplined them and now they're in jail or they're dead. Why? Because somebody simply couldn't be man enough or woman enough to say, I'm going to discipline this child. So I read verse 16, 17 again because I know most people say they believe in Jesus up until this point. <laughs> they believe in the Bible. The Bible is inspired, uh, but not verse 17. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. He shall give the light unto thy soul. And as I said, I've never met. You met a sulky child as a child that's not disciplined. You met a little miserable wretch as a child that's not disciplined. Children after children over the years, I've seen. And when I learned this principle, I was like, wow. And you would think it's, oh, the child needs more love than the parents like. As I said, just sitting there and a the child opened their mouth and the parents was there slapping, wiping the lollipop on their tongue. You're thinking that's good, sir. That's a loving parent. You wouldn't you think so? You, if you, imagine if you see a parent there and a the child just hanging their tongue out and the parent is there just sliding the lollipop across their tongue. They don't have to lick the lollipop. The lollipop will lick their tongue. You could interpret that as a parent that I love my child the most. <laughs> I love my child so much. Because my child just sit there and I just wipe the lollipop on their tongue. And every now and then they pull their tongue in and swallow. This is true love. And you're thinking, no, that's ruining love. You're ruining the child. You're, you're, you're being an enabler. Stop it. But you can't tell parents like that because they're thinking, yeah, but nobody did this for me when I was a child. My life was rough. I'm going to make it easy for my child. Come, child. I'm going to make the lollipop hit, lick you. And they wipe the lollipop across the mouth of the child. And they're thinking they're helping the child. They're ruining the child. Now verse 19 says of Proverbs 20. Proverbs 29 verse 19. A servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. Now this is a verse I don't want to get too much into. But this is again when it comes on to leadership. You you bring me a place when it comes on to especially management. Cause we're talking about servants now. Where there is no, you know, I'm talking about the unions or like the ruin of this place. Uh, where there is no type of stern discipline. There's no consequence. You just do whatever you want, however you want. And um, as I said, the, the, uh, the inmates are running the asylum. The inmates are running the prison. And guess what happened? Ah, everything is fine. Think about it. It's in the American prison. You probably have more men that have gone through the prison and in the prison that have been raped than female that's been raped in the society. This is a terrible thing. Because what happened? You have these young... You think about it, You have this building with all these little, you know, don't honor their father and their mother and criminals all locked up into one building. And now you're going to have to lead them imagine how difficult that is you almost have to lead them like they're you're running a uh i don't know like a, a some yeah you have to lead them worse than animals not even zoos you, you know zoo animals would be that, that would probably be better this is the reality you have just a building of people who never really listen to their mother and father and they ain't listening to no god and they're a bunch of violent criminals and now you have to whatever so they in there beating up each other raping each other Sad. So a servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. If you read the verse or translation the way different translators of the Bible rendered this passage of scripture, you realize real quickly, it is saying what it's saying. Uh, in leadership, sometimes words don't do, most of the time, unless order is established, people don't follow. People start calling out sick, people start doing this, people do you know, not putting out the amount of why all, every job you go to, there has to be matrix as to, um, you know, targets. 
as to how much hours is expected from a worker, how much job work they're supposed to get from week to week. Why if management doesn't enforce this in every single company, nothing happens. Production goes down. If people are not, if it's not enforced, people don't get written up, if people don't get fired, why in every company you have to have stern discipline? You know, people applaud Steve Jobs, but if you really learn a little bit about Steve Jobs, you realize really quickly that it was a level of screaming and expletives and rough management style. You look at the end product, people say, well, how you get that end product out? Well, again, you look at the management style. It happens in church also. If you do church, you try to do church, the most loving, the most kind. You try to show people, you know, as I say, kill them with love. And you have these wretches, they're going to overrun you. The more kind that you are, is the more they treat you like you're a boy. And I've seen this in every single instance. You have a guy that's a gentleman, he's a nice guy, respectful. And you watch people run him over. And they say, oh, he's soft. Uh, you have somebody now start to beat them over the head and they can build a, a strong group. May not be strong spiritually, but at least it'll be strong. People know they go there, they're going to get screamed at, they're going to get shouted at. And there are certain people, they are attracted to that type of leadership. And I know this personally. I know people personally. We have dealt with even ministry in my church. If, you, if you're a person that's screaming and barking and stepping on them and kicking them in wherever places you're supposed to kick them, they'll respond to you very well. You deal with them very nice and with kid glove or whatever, they're like, oh, yours a fool. Yours a show off. Yours a push over. And they start pushing you over. And you're like, I can't believe this. I have to talk to these people like animals for them to respond. Yeah. And I've proven this 100%. I've never failed. It is a sad reality and a sad statement of, on sinners that you try to be very gentleman with people in leadership. They run you over. But you start to be like a cat and start to like fang them and hit them in the head and bite them in the neck. Oh yeah, they, they respond nice to that. You know, you get them all working good. Good <laughs> working order. And I, I'm, saying, I'm so serious about this and I've never seen this fail. Somebody say, oh no, you can kill people with love. If you have an example of this working, I like to see that. I like to see that. Never work. Somebody say, it did not work in the Bible. Look, they murdered Christ. It's, it's, just, it's just what it is. You love people, you'll be very conciliatory. Treat them like they're black. Oh, yeah, I'm going to murder you. And so, so that's why when you look at the Old Testament, New Testament, God never stopped being God because God understands sinners will take this as an opportunity. They see your kindness as a weakness. So a servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. Uh, on the right translation, said, though you understand what you say, will not comply. And I know there's people who know because the Bible is love and all. Yeah, okay. You stay there. You go into management. You see what happened. People take advantage. They think, oh, she's so, oh, she's a Christian. Notice, anytime you deal with a human being, secular in the church, and you, you tell them that there's going to be a rule and it's going to be kept, they say, I thought you were a Christian. You notice that. They always say, Oh, I thought you were a Christian. Notice if you t if somebody talked to you rude and you said, don't talk to me like that. First thing, oh, I thought you were a Christian. If you say, hey, look, back up. They say, oh, I thought you were a Christian. Because they translate Christian to mean you're a fool and you can be pushed over and beaten up. This is what they translated. But they don't think about it. They say, remember, Bible says, Christ says, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. What the Bible says in Revelation 12, it says Michael and his angel fought with the dragon. What do you think they were do, doing a debate, a negotiation? How do you think Satan was falling like lightning so fast? Who threw him? But you see, people want to be more righteous than God and it doesn't work because the same people want to be more righteous than God and always say, oh no, but we need to be Christian. They're the one that they're saying that to me. It's cold for them to say, what you need to do is allow me to do all kind of nonsense because I'm not going to stop myself because I have no self-control. 
and you need to allow me you need to allow me to come in here and do this do that and if I, if you tell me stop i'm gonna say oh but you're not a christian a christian will be more merciful i would allow me to shipwreck this place and to to just speak to people so forth and the same way in management is the same way with kids the child want you to allow them to destroy themselves as i remember somebody says you know there are certain people that manage their their relationships to a divorce court and you watch those they'll do it over and over again if you don't stop i said no you gotta stop no no you gotta even tell you you're gonna stop or i'm gonna stop you oh no they'll manage their relationship right to the divorce court you are in any and joy says this she says in every organization stern discipline has to be enacted in every you go look that up every organization stern discipline has to be enacted in a marriage because you, you notice the first you if you, i'm always watching i'm always observing i quite listen and the first person would say the husband is the head of the house is always the uh, most of the time i should say uh just in case i'm wrong one or two times is always the woman oh the husband is the head of the house and then she begin to to talk <laughs> She began to lay, lay down the rule. I'd be like, mm, I thought you just said the husband is the head. Now it's time for you to stop talking. See, but in every organization, notice in verse 21, he that delicately bring up his servant from a, ch from a child shall have him become his son at length. As I say, various different translation translate verse 21 as uh, if you train up a child in this type of way, a servant, sorry, in this type of way, in the end, the child is going to become your ear. The, the, the servant, sorry, is going to become your ear. Your the servant is going to become insolent, a rebel. One translation says a servant will be a rebel, um, will be entitled, will be arrogant. And you can apply that verse same way with a child. Notice these kids, it's like, there, there was a case that came up last year, which, you know, was so funny because it was over here in New York. And the young man who is 30-something, have a child, living at home with his parents. The parents want him out of the house and he sued the parents to stay in the house. And, and ultimately, when he sued the parents to stay in the house, um, all the, the conservative commentators were like, oh, yeah, he's a liberal. And then when they interviewed him, Alex Jones interviewed him. Uh, which is an interview still worth watching, but I think they took it off. I wish I had copied it because they took it off, because they took down Alex Jones from YouTube. But when Alex Jones interviewed him, he says, oh, no, I'm a conservative. And he started to expose conservative principles. <laughs> and I think that that was the funniest thing because he shut everybody else up because they were thinking, oh, he must be a liberal, liberal leaning because conserv conservatives work hard. So with all the trailer parks, they work hard. Um, you know, all these people who are in welfare that are conservative, they're working hard. So when you look at it, what happened here? Because it's not anything to do with conservative or liberal. It don't matter if you're Christian or secular. If you train a child up a certain way, the end result is going to be the same. It don't matter what their political, ideological leaning. It has nothing to do with that. It don't matter with what they validate or not validate. It has to do with the training. Whether the child is liberal or conservative, it has nothing to do with anything. The training is you train up a slob. It's going to be a slob. You train up a child to be in. That, that's not the intention of the parents. That's just going to be the re result. Somebody could hear me and they could bob blood. And they could say, oh, no, it's not going to go like that. Because my child, my little Johnny, is going to come out different. Yeah, right. Johnny's going to come out the same way. I've learned it have nothing to do with what church you, you belong to or your intent. The intent doesn't matter. My intent could be to love my child, but as I say, having my child hanging them out, their tongue out and wiping a lollipop on their tongue for themselves. What I just did, I trained a child to be lazy, not to even eat, not to feed the child. So if you have a same thing with the management, if you have a situation where you're encouraging people and you don't put them to work, they're never going to find work. You the boss, you got to put them to work. I've learned it over the years. You're wasting your time. People just don't get up and go. Because most people, they're not, they, they're not, if you train them to be a rebel, they're going to be a rebel. Even if it's not your intent. If you train a child to be insolent, it's not your intent. I walk up to a child and child can't say hi to me. Forget about it. Just imagine a child at 16 or 18 or 20 something. Uh, a child is entitled. They think that whatever you work, what is yours is theirs. 
And that was a little boy. He think his parents, all his parents' labor and everything his parents had was his. So he going to sue them for it. And what they should have done, uh, you know, they don't do corporal punishment over here. But the judge should have the right to bring in the sheriff and not only they vote against him and tell, look, you lost your case, but we're going to take you and and beat you. I sent some sense into it. So I remember I went on to um, Alex Jones' show. Alex Jones said to him, said, look, I'm paying you to give you the deposit to get out of your parents' house. But I want to interview again, but you cannot come back for me to interview unless you go get a job. And so forth and so on. They basically had to be coaxing him and begging him to come into the adult world. And this is a generation of young men that we have grown under the Oprah Winfrey philosophy. And it's not working. A whole generation of them, they, they, no matter if they're secular, they're Christian, they're Adventist, they're Baptist, they're Methodist, they believe that they evolved. The end result is always the same because you have nothing to do with none of those things. It has to do with the parental training. The training is training kids to be bubble-headed head dolls. If you, as I say, if you're licking the, lap, the lollipop for your child and spitting the juice into the child's mouth, you have trained a failure. You are a failure. And no matter your intention, oh, my intention was to not make them lose their teeth. So I'd lick the lollipop for them. Oh, okay then. Yeah, right. Um, in Psalms 126 verse 5 and, and 6, it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And so this is what it is, is that it, it might not be the most pleasant experience to go through this thing. But in this life, I'm telling you, taking herbs, especially bad tasting herbs, is a horrible experience. I take herbs at times that make my whole body shiver and quake. That I am convinced when I'm taking the herb that the herb is a serious, deadly poison. Because there's no way on earth, even after I've taken the herbs 10 times, can you tell me or my mind or convince me that something that tastes so bad is not a poison. But yet the herb is a miracle. It's a healer. And so when it comes on to rearing kids, to me, it's like dealing with herbs. Yes, people have this false idea. Oh, it's all about fun and games. But you still have a fiduciary responsibility to your God and to the child and to yourself to make sure that you do what is right for the child long term, not for your sick pleasures and entertainment. Because the child is already here. You've got to discipline the child for the child's sake, but also for your own peace. So that you don't have to spend so much money for lawyer fee because the child was raised bad. Notice here. When you're sowing, as my chapter 13, verse 3 through 9 says, that when you're sowing, it is like the parable of the sower. Some of the seeds are going to fall this way and some will fall this way and that way. But if you sow and you develop this child into a good ground, when the words of God hit that child's ear, the child will listen. I'm going to tell you, you are God for the child. And you're, you're the first God, so to speak, for the child. And if when you speak, the child like dismiss you, because you train a child not to listen to the word that you speak. I'm going to tell you that's his first mistake. Because, again, as Christ, with Christ, you strike the rock one time, and the second time you speak or you pray to the rock. But if you didn't strike the rock one time, I'm going to tell you, I don't know how you're going to speak and hit the child here. It's the same process. One time, water comes out of it. The second time, you just speak to the rock, rock, whatever. If you're still talking to the child, the child can hear. Probably it's because you never used the rod in the first place. Hope you got that. Use the rod the first time. Second time you speak to the rock. Your parents try to negotiate with children. And I'm thinking the child can't even understand half of the vocabulary you're using. Why you negotiating? But you take a child, you negotiate, you take a, pay, a wife, a, 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 a whatever, and negotiate. I know somebody might not like that, but that's the reality. And you will be negotiating and begging and pleading. You'll be screaming, begging for your life. And so when you sow, you want to sow in righteousness. You sow how the Bible tells you to sow, the results would be peace. You do it the way God gives us. Notice in man's sin, God says, curses the ground. God didn't say, here's more candy. I don't believe I've gotten all the candy that they could have gotten. And they still rebel. God said, okay, I'm going to curse the ground for you. We now go the opposite direction. We are trying to deal in a way so the child know that our words, our instruction, they're serious. And they ought to be taken so because the instructions you're giving the child is instructions that will bless the child. They're not there to take away the happiness from the child. 
So you need the child to understand, look, take me serious. Because I'm for, I'm looking out for your best interests. I want you to be happy. And that's the same thing, the flip with the devil. The flip with the devil is the devil come and give us candy and destroy us in the long run. God come and say, hey, look, I want you to listen to my commandments because I want you to be happy. And we say, oh, no, that's the hard way. It does not work. Let us pray. How far the word in heaven? I pray a blessing upon the word, blessing upon the minds that will hear this, that the prejudices or whatever it is that would stop them from blessing their kids may be vanished away. May your spirit may be upon us, dear Lord, that we might do the hard work, especially in the beginning, that later on we can speak to that child. May your grace go with us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again live Monday morning where we should talk about motivation. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.